Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel and today we have a super fun collaboration hosted by Rachel from Seven and All on our favorite Christmas picture books and read alouds. I'm really excited to share with these ones with you guys today. <laughs> For starters, we do an awful lot for Christmas with school and whatnot, um, but my husband is not here during the day, so one of our favorite things that we do is this book, and it is called The Way to the Manger, a family advent devotional, and it's um, from Jeff and Abby Land. And it's just a really nice way to sit down together as a family in the evening and um, remember the reason for the season. It has beautiful pictures. It gives you ways to take everything, take all of your studies a little further. Um, there's a story, there's a prayer that you guys can all pray together. Um, and there's little spaces for you guys to write down memories and things like that in it. And so this is definitely one of our absolute favorites to follow along. Uh, we also do the Jesse tree with the um, Jesus Storybook Bible, but that is for another video later on. Uh, one, I'm pretty sure all of the mamas are going to have on here is our good old trusty Polar Express. Uh, <laughs> I think this story is probably almost as old as I am. And oh, I'm just a smidgen bit older <laughs> than this one. But I will say it probably came out just at the perfect time because this has been a favorite of mine since childhood. And we even go ahead and read it together. We make a night of it with the movie. So it's a lot of fun. I think what I love most about the Polar Express is how they show kindness and friendship to one another regardless of demographic. And even if your family doesn't do the whole Santa Claus thing, um, the idea of believing, I think, is very important. So, the Polar Express, classic family favorites. Um, my daughter actually picked this one up at our local thrift store. And it is the story of Christmas for children. Um, it's a nice little illustrated book. And it basically just explains in a nice way why we celebrate Christmas. Two kids. so And it's short and sweet and very to the point. Another favorite of ours is the tale of the three trees. Uh, we read this all year long, honestly, but um, I think it's great to read anytime. Um, I think I even read it um, for our church. I did a Facebook Live and I read it to um, my congregation during Lent just because I feel like this is, it's a good story and the first time I read it, I'm not going to lie, I teared up probably by the second page when I realized what each tree was actually meant for in the story, in the greater story. Uh, A Little House Christmas. This one is great because it has a lot. It has the stories from all the ho the holiday stories from all the little house books. It has songs in it. 
um, my kids really love it. And it was a kind of a fun precursor just to get everybody um, into the Little House books. We've read this for two years now, and I think we're going to go ahead and start the Little House series itself this year. But these are just really sweet stories um, from the Little House books. Always beautiful stories from Laura Ingalls Wilder. This one is Christmas Stories, a keepsake collection. And we kind of alternate the stories in this one, but it's a well-illustrated, beautiful version of another book, kind of similar to another book that we have. And it has a lot of the classic Christmas stories in it. Um, we alternate this one with another favorite that is going to be one of the last ones I show you guys. Oh, the Elf on the Shelf. We are reading this one again this year, and we will be doing the Shrinky Dinks yet again. Um, this one actually came with the fun little set. We do the Elf on the Shelf, but we also do the Shepherd. So we have a lot of traditions around here that we follow. Um, I'm not great at always remembering to move the elf, but we always kind of do something. Uh, I think it may show up in quarantine this year. So actually not a bad idea. Um, but yeah, this was really fun and you don't actually have to buy the kit, but it is a lot of fun. You can find the Shrinky Dink wrap and write your letters to Santa. These were a lot of fun and it was a sweet little story. It was kind of fun to do with the kids. Um, we went ahead, it had the big sheets, they were already decorated. The kids wrote their letters to Santa and then um, they, the elf took them to Santa and they came back as ornaments on our tree. So this one is one that I have had for many years. You can tell it's quite old. Um, it survived our fire <laughs> and all sorts of things, but it's called The Complete Christmas Book, and I got it about 20 years ago from a book sale at um, from our local library. And it's a little different than the stories and the treasury and whatnot. Um, this goes through customs. It goes through some of the history of Christmas. It teaches you how to wrap presents properly, um, how to give more than you receive, how you can help others, uh, classic Christmas dinners, how to make your own Christmas cards. Um, Christmas in America, and then it does have stories in it, so there are some stories, um, and then there are um, some poems in here and um, some music, so you may have to search for this one, uh, but it is a really good one, and it is the complete Christmas book. And it is edited by Franklin Watts and illustrated by William Ronan. Um, and its copyright is 1958. So if you can find it, it's a really good one to have. We enjoy it. <sighs> so I have two more absolute favorites. And these ones are probably used just as much. And they both come from my childhood. And I don't think the Christmas season would quite be Christmas without them. And yes, I love the baking of the cookies. I love, I love all of the traditions um, that we have. But... This 
the Norman Rockwell's Christmas book has been with me. It was my, my grandmother's and it was my mother's and uh, no Christmas season reading would be complete without this book. Uh, it's beautiful. It is completely um, full of all of Norman Rockwell's beautiful pictures, um, completely accompanied. There are a lot of acknowledgments. It is divided up. Its contents are divided up. It has carols, poems, Christmas remembered, um, the first Christmas, and then stories. Um, it, <laughs> some of my absolute favorite stories are in this book, and we actually lost the original in our fire, and I searched and I searched and I searched to find this, the original one that I grew up with. And if the only thing you manage to get out of this is finding the story of the miraculous staircase, the miraculous staircase by Arthur Gordon. My mother read that to me when I was a little girl and it has stuck with me forever and ever and ever and it gives you every reason to believe that miracles still happen all around us and it makes you look for them almost um, it's an old story it's a true story and it's probably one of my absolute favorites um, there is Fanny Merritt Farmer's Christmas dinner in here. Um, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. Um, some of the poems would be Christmas Trees by Robert Frost. Obviously, A Visit from St. Nicholas. And there is... The Boy Who Laughed at Santa Claus by Ogden Nash. Um, some of the authors of this would be Louisa May Alcott, Hans Christian Andersen, Lewis Carroll, Francis P. Church, um, Charles Dickens, obviously Fanny Merritt Farmer, Robert Frost, author Ar Arthur Gordon, Langston Hughes, and so, so many others. Um, if you can find this book, I tell you what, that it's a, it completes in so many ways a wonderful collection of Christmas books for your family. But for me, last... And probably least. Um, I will have to say that I think I did forget A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which um, we may yet read this year. I don't know. We may not. And it is out on the shelf. I did not grab that one. But years and years ago, when I was a surly teenager, just before my, it was the, the Christmas that my grandfather passed away. My grandfather actually passed away five days before Christmas. And we had our Christmas presents from him still, obviously, my mom's dad. And I was getting very cynical about holidays and things like that. And my parents had split up and I got this. The Christmas Chronicles by Jeff Gwynn. And Jeff Gwynn is a writer. Um, he writes in Fort Worth, Texas. That's where he's from. And he wrote this sweet little trio um, 
called the Christmas Chronicles. And the very first book, it consists of three books. The Autobiography of Santa Claus, How Mrs. Claus Saved Christmas, and The Great Santa Search. And if the only one of these that you manage to find is the autobiography of Santa, Santa Claus, get it and read it. And I promise you, it is going to become one of your absolute family favorites. It has 24 chapters, one for each day. Each actually, each book has 24 chapters. So um, we now alternate them. And I have read them to my older children and my younger children kind of have sat along. And this year, um, the big kids are obviously not around. So it's just the little ones listening. And so we have started all over with the autobiography of Santa Claus. But each book has 24 chapters. So you can start on the 1st of December and end just on Christmas Eve. Um, they are as told to Mr. Gwyn by Santa Claus himself. And they are wonderfully researched, full of history, and they take you all the way back. All the way back. We are talking the honest to goodness history of Santa Claus and his role in the church, his role in Christmas. Um, and it's really one of the best stories I've ever read, ever. Um, there aren't a lot of books that I will read over and over again. Um, in fact, I haven't even read the other two over and over and over again. But the one that I will always read over and over again, and I actually have bought copies to gift to my older children for their own bookshelves, and I have copies um, already set aside for someday when my younger children leave. Um, because this series, by and large, completes with between my Norman Rockwell and this, I don't know that I would actually ever need to have another Christmas book ever in my house. There are some pictures in here. It's, um, there are recipes and it is so, so full of history, um, historical figures, and it's just a really neat read. Um, and the fact that it's told basically by Santa makes it even more fun for the kids. But I will say that when I was a surly teenager and I got this book for Christmas, I couldn't put it down. I could not put it down. And in a little bit of a way, this book changed my life. It changed how I looked at giving. It changed how I looked at the story of Santa Claus. And it changed my faith. Because I guess in so many ways, I never realized how Christ and Santa Claus were so interconnected. But this book helps you understand all of it. So if there was only one book I could completely encourage you to get this year, it would be this. And I will put a link in the description box to it. Um, and the Norman Rockwells, if I can find it, along with the playlist link. So you can check out all the rest of the great books from the other mamas that are in this uh, collaboration because there are some really great stories and I think they're all different. So even I am probably going to walk away with a must have, must buy a few more books to add to our collection um, for next year. And I look really forward to that. And I want to remind you guys to Keep following, hit the notification bell, make sure you're following along with us so you can get the newest videos because we have got some really fun stuff 
coming up for the holidays to share with all of you guys. So I feel completely comfortable saying with just a little over a week to Thanksgiving, happy holidays. And I look forward to spending more of them with all of you guys and sharing a little bit more of what we do with all of you. Don't forget to check out the rest of the playlists and have a good day.